Now, all of that is Sermon on the Mount stuff. You can play this little experiment throughout the New Testament. I'm not saying that in every situation the best way to say it would be justice outward. Sometimes the best way to say it definitely seems to be righteousness inward because the, the context demands it. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It hath been committed unto us, the ministry of reconciliation, where, whereby we tell the world that God has not counted their sins against them. So be ye reconciled to God, for God made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that we might be made the dikosune of God in Christ. It sounds to me that we've been dealing with new creations and not being what we used to and being reconciled to God and that's internal and it makes sense, very much makes sense to say he was, he made, was made sin, I get to be made righteousness. It's out of context there to go and God made him to be sin so that we could be made the justice of God in Christ. It's out of context. Maybe it works, but it doesn't work as well. Context is king. Romans chapter one and I'll close. I want to share one with you that I have wrestled and wrestled and wrestled and wrestled with. I thought I had the answer and then figured out, well, I don't know if I have it or not. I've preached it. I've taught it. I still don't claim to have an answer, but I got another thing to throw into the soup right now. All right. I got another thing to throw into the stirring and the wrestling for you. And you probably know where I'm going because you know that we're taking the righteousness dikosune and we're inserting the other understanding of it as justice. Look at one of the most Famous passages in Paul's writings, in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, the dikosune of God is revealed from faith to faith. That is, is written, the just live by faith. What if Paul is talking to the oppressed church at Rome beneath the power of the Roman Empire? beneath the shadow of Caesar, who feels the boot of empire on their neck every day. A slave environment, where most of the converts of the Roman church are probably enslaved members of Roman households. Paul's first hint was how he opened the book. Paul, a slave. Sort of like giving a message to all you slaves. Listen up, I know how you feel. I'm gonna have a conversation with you about what I think the gospel looks like. Maybe Paul says, for therein, in the gospel, is the justice of God revealed from faith to faith. Those of us in that justice live by that faith. And let me tell you why I think that might be the case. Because it makes the most sense for what happens in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Remember what I told you before. Anywhere that it's conversely negative in the Greek would be the place to use the conversely negative of justice. So let's try that. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and injustice, people who suppress truth through their injustice. We have to stop thinking about the wrath of God as smoke coming out of his ears and fire coming out of his nostrils and God's about to smash somebody. Think of it more in terms of the way your child was thinking of you when they said, man, that really made dad mad. Right? Your child said that about you. I said that about my dad. My dad was never truly angry at me a moment in his life, not through the lens of the way I used to think the father was angry at us. But I knew that my dad got mad at me from time to time. That was how I defined it. Now, if I had been writing my own book of Romans, I would have said something, or my own book about my dad, I would have said, now sometimes the wrath of my father is pretty severe and he gets on me. And you might read that later and think, boy, we have to deal with a wrathful God. I don't believe that's the case at all. I think we need to understand that the wrath of God is a focused, is a, is a definition focused around injustice. See that? Where's the wrath of God revealed? Against injustice. You know why we've had to dance with that verse? Because for us, righteousness is personal. So what's unrighteousness? Personal. So if God's wrath is against unrighteousness, what's he mad at? Sin. So who's he mad at? Sinners. So when you sin, God gets mad, and then you're in trouble. And you go, wait, what, what's the cross all about? But what if dikosune is, here is not your personal righteousness? What if it's justice and injustice? That if you want to see God stand up and defend people, be in, unjust to them. 
injustice and the lack of new covenant justice may be the thing the church has to wrestle with in the next generation that we've pushed off for far too long. And I think we're in the greatest moment in the history of the church because we get a chance now to show justice that looks like Jesus. The meek shall inherit the earth, Jesus said. That's our beatitude. One of the oldest Greek definitions of meek is this, the ability to draw a sword but you keep it sheathed. When Jesus says the meek inherit the earth, he's not talking about the mealy-mouthed. He's talking about the man that has the power to draw, but doesn't draw. And that takes the justice of heaven, not the justice of the earth. Father, thank you for an opportunity to wrestle together with your kids. We've gotten to look into your scriptures and we've got to ask tough questions. And I don't know if we've come away with one answer. But my, my personal heart has been ignited in seeking that truth through you. If nothing else, Father, when we walk out today, may we look at the performance and the life of Jesus through a new lens. Through a new way to practice this out on the earth. That we are not made righteous by what we do, but because we have been made righteous, we do. And God, if we can walk in that reality and that truth, then I believe we have a chance to show the world justice the way Jesus proclaims justice. Help us with this in Jesus' name. Amen.